Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're about to listen to a message from our church here in Hillsong, Denmark. Make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, or even share with a friend, and stick around afterwards for different ways to connect. Helping us move forward as a church, but can we pray together? Uh, before we get around the word, thank you, God, that you are here. Thank you that you are speaking to us through your word. Thank you that it is living, it is active, and it has the power to transform our lives. And we pray that you will uh, open up our hearts to see what you want to tell us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said together, Amen. Amen. Hey, before you find a seat, uh, stand, stand up, please. Stand up, please. Can you can, can you just find find someone find someone around you and just just tell them one one great thing that has happened this year one thing that you are thankful for this year so far and I'm thankful for this team up here thank you guys well done What a beautiful day. You know, we're, we're getting a new king. We're getting a new queen today. And I know Thomas and Kat are in Australia. And in Australia, they're also going wild because, because the, our, the Danish, the Danish uh, queen is going to be Australian. So how, how cool is that? It's all coming together, guys. And, uh, and, and you, you guys are the spiritual ones who decided to be in church today instead of lining up at, at, the, at the palace at 7 a.m. I know there were people camping out. Uh, but I promise you, we will be done in time so that you have time to go and uh, kind of check out the volunteer stuff. You can even be anointed and prayed for if you weren't able to be prayed for last week. Uh, we want to make sure that we ha you, ha you get an opportunity to, uh, to be anointed and prayed for for the year ahead. We're going to do that after the service as well. And then you will have time to go down and celebrate and get amongst the crowd and everything that is happening. But are you ready for the word? Are we, are, we, are we awake? Are we ready? Uh, also very good to have some friends from Hillsong Vienna here today. Uh, it's, it's great. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just good to be part of a global church. And I also, it was nice to see Duncan Corby, my old theology professor from, uh, from Hillsong College. He looks exactly the same, doesn't he? <laughs> he doesn't, he hasn't, it's, it's 10 years ago that I was, oh, it's 12 years ago that I was there, but he hasn't, he hasn't changed a bit. Um, but it's a great thing to be part of our church. And, but we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. It says this, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And if you want a title for this message, it is called, Let's Get In Formation. Let's Get In Formation. And I have a confession to make. Uh, I am one of those people who, and I'm not, not sure if this is the case with you, but if I'm struggling with something, if I'm going through something, uh, what kind of makes me feel better is complaining about it to someone else. Just letting everyone know about it, and a, and a couple of couple of years ago, I I, I got injured. I, I I got what is called in 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 Danish is called a heel spur, a heel spur. I think is actually called in English, and 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 and, and it's quite a painful thing. It's it almost feels like you have a nail up through your heel, and it's like it's hard to walk. Definitely couldn't run. You know, so I was just complaining about it. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm, I'm limping. <laughs> this, this is so painful. And then and and then a friend of mine told me, oh. I, I had the same thing a little, like a, a while ago, and, 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 and I know a thing you can do. I have this exercise you can do. You, you walk over, and you, f you find like a step, and, and, and then you stand, stand on top of it, and let's see if I can do it here, and then you do 10 <laughs> toe raises, <laughs> ten, and you do two sets, and after a while, it's going to help you. And I was like, oh, thank you. It's finally so, although I, didn't, I wasn't really looking for advice, but you know, people tend to give you advice when you complain and you have to deal with it. But I was like, thank you so much for, for helping me, and I went home, and I didn't do it. 
Then a few months went by, and and I was in Norway visiting my family, and and uh, and and you know my my my, my brother-in-law, who is a physiotherapist, overheard me complaining about my my issue, and he was like, George, I just couldn't help but noticing you're limping and you're complaining about this thing that's happening in your heel. Uh, I actually know something that could help you. There's this this little exercise you can do. You just walk walk over. You find you find a step. And, and, and then you stand, stand on it with your toe, and then you do 10 toe raises, <laughs> and maybe two sets, and, I, and after a while, it will help you. And I was like, man, this is a sign. You are the second person who's telling me about this, this very same exercise. And so I, I went home, and I didn't do it. You know, it's just, it's just an awkward thing, you know, to do, and it's boring, and it's like, oh. So, so and, and, and another few months went by, and, and, I was, and, I was, and uh, we were talking to a f- friend of ours who used to work as a professional dancer, and she said, you know, George, I just couldn't help but noticing, hearing these, these rumors about this issue that you're having. <laughs> um, you know, I actually used to have the same issue, and, uh, and I have this one thing that maybe could help you. It helped me. You walk over, and you find a step, <laughs> and, 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 you, and you stand, stand at the side of it, and then you do 10 toe raises, and then maybe two sets, and then after a while, it's going to help you. So I was like, wow, this is a sign. You are the third person who's telling me about this, this exercise. So I went home, and I tried it. I was like, I, I, yeah, thank you, guys. So, so I, I was on this step, and like, it's, 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 it's a really awkward thing. It is, it's really, really boring and annoying, but I was like... I'm just going to keep going with it. And I was like, I, I was about to give up. But then after a week, I kid you not, the issue was gone. <laughs> and I was like, why? Why was I so stupid that I just didn't do the one thing that could help me, but I've just, I've just been putting it off. And, and I was like, what is going on with that? But I think sometimes when we want something to change, what we actually want is something to happen quickly immediately something big that will change everything in a moment, preferably through a pill, you know, a pill form, so you can just eat it, and then, then you'll, be done, you'll be done with it. But actually, the way that change usually happens is by doing small things often. It's what you do continually. Small things often will actually have a massive impact on your life. And, and you know, Tim... Uh, uh, Paul is writing this to, to, to Timothy in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. He, he, he says this, physical training is good. Oh, come on, Paul, did you have to go there? I'm feeling convicted already. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's true, though. Physical training is good. If, if you have a regular practice, small things often of, of physical exercise, it will actually release endorphins in your body, you will be happier, you'll get more energy, you'll strengthen your heart, you'll live longer, you have stronger bones, uh, you know, you have better mental health. You know, it's, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in life and in life to come. So what Paul is saying is just as there are ways that, that, that you, can, you can exercise physically in order to improve your health, there are actually things that you can do to improve your health spiritually. Things that you can do, habits that you can put in place so that you can grow in your, in your spiritual health, so that you can become more like Jesus. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I recognize, you know, that when I became a Christian, there, there were some things that sort of changed quite quickly, and, 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 and I know this through speaking to lots of people in our church who make a decision to follow Jesus, and, you know, there's just certain things that just overnight, it just isn't an issue anymore, uh, and because, because Jesus does that, but then I also recognize in my own journey that with other things, it takes time. You know, because God, he is, not, he is not interested in being an impersonal miracle worker. No, he is a personal father who is interested in who we are becoming, who we are growing into. And he, he wants to take us by the hand and lead us on a journey. So, so, so when it comes to the issues 
that, that you might be dealing with still, and you're thinking, man, I, I, I want to see a change in my life in this area. I want, to, I want to grow in this area over here. Actually, yes, God does change in an instance, but actually there are things that we can put in place day in and day out that, that will help work it into our lives. The, the, the Bible uses uh, words like this. In, uh, it's, it says, put off the old self and put on the new self. Now, this, this is quite cool. It's almost like Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm giving you a new outfit. Maybe you like that better than the training, training kind of metaphor. <laughs> you're, you're getting a new outfit. It's purchased for you. It's given to you for free. But actually what we need to do is just to put off the old self that has been corrupted by sinful desires, the, the Bible tells us. And then we put, off the, put on the new self through, the, through the being made new in our minds. And then... The Bible also talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that there's actually, and we actually know this now through science, that, that, that brain patterns actually, they, they, uh, it's not just a thing that we kind of think this is true. Like actually you can rewire your brain through changing the way that you think. And it is a process that we're going through. It doesn't happen in a moment because we, even though we have a new spirit, we actually have the same body of flesh and our brain is actually flesh as well. So it's, you know, we, we have to work with it. And God is taking us on, on a journey. I, lo- I love this statement that Paul also uses. That he says, let Christ be formed in you. So, so it's almost like we, there, there's this transaction that happens over time. And, and, and that, that Christ is being formed within us. And I don't know about you. But I really want more this year of God's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I want to have greater courage. I want to have greater strength and confidence and power and everything that God has for me. And, you know, the way that we step into that is, is, is it's not just through the big moments. It's actually through the small things often, beholding him. Without a veil, we are being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to another. But then obviously the question is, how does that happen? How, how do we do that? Are you interested in knowing how? You know, I'm actually going to give you seven ways to do that. And there, there's plenty more out there, but we, we don't have that much time. And seven is pushing it already. <laughs> Um, and and they, they are faith habits. They're, they're kind of these, these spiritual practices that, that the church throughout history has, has always been involved with. And when I tell them to you, it might sound like I'm telling you to go and find a step and, you know, just awkwardly kind of stand here and, and do 10 toe raises. <laughs> And then it, I promise you it's going to make a difference because so some of these things, they might, they might seem small, they might seem insignificant, but actually over time, it is what produces transformation in our lives. So these are seven ways to get information. Are you ready? Okay, the first thing is scripture. You know, God has revealed himself to us in his word. Isn't that phenomenal that the God who created heavens and the earth is actually interested in you? He has created you, he has formed you, and he wants to speak to you. And the primary way that God speaks to us is through his word, the Bible that we have accessible to us. And, you know, I, I was talking to, to, uh, to a guy in church a little while ago who, who recently became a believer. He became a believer just before Christmas, and I, and I was talking to him on New Year's Eve. We had a service there, and he was like, George, I need to tell you about this. This is so strange. You know, when, when I read the Bible, it's, it's, it's like something happens within me. It's like even the things that I don't understand, I can feel them. Yeah. Like, wh- what is going on with that? You know, isn't that a beautiful thing? That the Word of God, it is, it is living. Yeah. You know, in, in Psalm chapter 1, I love this picture. It, 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 it talks about the, the, the blessed one, and, and I'm going to pick it up a, a bit further down in the, in, in the verses. But it says, blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. And I think, I think I have a picture of a, of a tree up here. And, 
And I, and I don't know if you have, have thought about this, how, how, how incredibly genius it is uh, that, that, that the trees do this, that they send out their roots. And, 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 and actually, roots, is almost, it's like some people argue that trees have, almost have brains because, because it's, 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 they can almost direct, direct the roots. And I'm not going to go into, into all that. I, I felt like going down to it. <laughs> into a hole there talk, because trees are fascinating. But, but trees can withstand the seasons because they have roots that sink down deep to where they get sustenance, where they get their source from, where they get, get energy from. And I just want to tell you that when we engage with the Word of God, actually it's, it's yes, we get to know our Father, but also something happens within us. We actually draw His energy. We, in, we draw on His source, and it actually transforms us and grows us. Because when we plant our roots down deep into His Word, it transforms us from the inside out. So I want to encourage you this year. How can you engage with the Bible? And, 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 and I know that, that Thomas actually has a, has a Bible study that he, he's kind of said, uh, anyone who wants to join the Bible study, it's on WhatsApp. Do we, do we have that on the, on the screen? Otherwise, I can give it after the service. We'll do it at the end. Uh, but, but yes, there you go. So, so if you're like, I don't know where to start, put up your camera right now. Put it on there. Uh, you know, one thing I, I like to do with all of this is habit stack. You know, it's not a spiritual principle, but it works. You know, I drink my coffee every single morning. So I know if I read my Bible when I drink my coffee, I'm never going to leave my house without reading my Bible because they're just connected for me. So I I just want to encourage you, how can you engage with the Bible? Because when, as we do it, we're drawing strength from the Lord and he is transforming us. Second thing, second faith practice that I want to talk about is prayer. Uh, our, our daughter that is uh, down here on front row, she is uh, now almost f- five months old, and, and she started to make sounds. It's quite funny. I, do, do, I think we have a video uh, of, of, of her. Uh, and, 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 you know... Ev- ev- Evelina is, it was filming that, and she's saying that was her first word. She said, Mama. Uh, you know, because, because we, we, we have been sort of, you know, you know you're, you're kind of wondering, what, what is that first word going to be? You know, and I'm like, Papa, Papa, Papa. And then this comes out, heartbroken, you know. It, but, but it's quite strange, isn't it, that, that, that we speak to babies, <laughs> Babies who don't know anything, you know, they, they don't understand us. Even, even while Evelina was pregnant, I was speaking to, to the baby. I was like, oh, what, what is up with that? But, but actually, what happens when you're speaking to a child is that they're learning how to speak. Because all language is answering language. We, we can only speak because we first have been spoken to. And when we enter into a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father, we realize that He has always been speaking to us. That he, He's just through the Bible, through His Scripture, through things that have happened in our life, He's just been pouring out. He's just been speaking to us. And suddenly we realize, oh, that's what's happening. And then the response that come, comes out of us, our answers are our prayers. So when we engage with prayer, we are entering into a, a conversation with God, where we get to, and, and, and you know, that's, that's the same thing with a child, you know, it's like when, when you're talking to a child, you, you, you are not kind of, you know, she has a personality already, we, we know that, it's, it's already in there, but in the conversation, in, the, in the, like what's going to happen as she grows up is that she discovers who she is, she's going to grow, and you know, you know it, it's in, in that kind of relationship and conversation that we have with God through him speaking to us and through our prayers that Christ is being formed in us through the Holy Spirit. And prayer, as a child speaking to a parent, isn't always pretty. Can I just tell you that? You know, sometimes you think, oh, I need, I need to pray like the person on the platform, you know, using nice words and biblical words and all of that. But actually, prayer is a heart language. From us to, and, and you know, you can see, the, see through the Bible that 
prayer is not always positive. Yes, it is also positive. It's worship. We're adoring Him. We're pointing out the beautiful things that we're seeing Him. But it's also complaining. It's also crying. It's also yelling. <laughs> it's it's, it's all, all sorts of things that we can bring to God. And I just want to encourage you this year, as you step into this conversation with God, to just decide to be honest with Him. To decide to open your heart to him, because the way that we draw close to him is actually by being honest to him. To actually allow him to speak into not where we wish we were, but allow him to speak into where we actually are. And I really believe that prayer changes things. It really, really does. And it changes us. It, it really, truly does. Okay, th third faith practice is silence and solitude. Silence and solitude. Have you recognized how hard it is to find silence and solitude? <laughs> silence and solitude is when you remove yourself from external kind of inputs, and, and you're, just, you're just there. It's almost impossible. <laughs> you know, I've, I've tried it, and it's become kind of popular now with this dopamine fast, you know, where you're kind of trying to put away your phone, and, and, and it's really good for me, but then... I've, I've tried that, but then suddenly I find myself on Evelina's phone on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't even know how that happened. You're like, <laughs> because we, we are in such a noisy world. There's always messages being sent in. Like, even when we are by ourselves, we have this device that just keeps pushing out information, keeps pushing our dopamine buttons. Like, ah, we're like this, <laughs> this monkey that is just stuck in the, in the hamster wheel. I'm not sure where that metaphor came from. But it can sort of feel like that. But actually, throughout the Bible, you see that God draws his people into the wilderness, into the place where all the external inputs are, are gone, where, where, where you're isolated from others, where, where you don't have all this noise that is coming in. And silence and solitude is, by the way, it's when you voluntarily does that. It's, it's different than isolation. But actually, what happens when we are quiet before the Lord, you know, this is a beautiful phrase that says, be still and know that I am God. And at least for me, what happens is that when I'm still, first thing that happens is that I'll face myself. I suddenly notice what's going on within me. And I think maybe that's why we don't like it. <laughs> maybe that's why it just really feels like we're standing on a step, trying to keep our balance, <laughs> doing these toe raises, because, because it, it, it can be challenging to notice actually where we are. But... When we do it in the presence of Jesus, it is safe. Because in silence and solitude, we face ourselves and we encounter God. It's, it's, it's in that moment where we, where we don't, when we can't pretend any longer that we're okay, where we see clearly where we are, that God can actually speak to us and transform us. And I'm, I'm wondering, and you know, you have... Jesus did this, so, so you know, we, we also don't have, have, have an excuse not to do it. You know, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed, it says in Luke chapter 5 and 16. And, and, and I'm wondering, what, what can that lonely place be for you this year? Maybe it is actually deciding on your commute that you don't put in your headphones and or watch this video or do, listen to the music, but actually to, on your walk, just... Be with, be with God. Maybe it's when you're drinking your coffee and you're just taking two minutes in the morning just to kind of center yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I'm just going to be silent before you. May, may, maybe it is when you, when you shower. Or maybe it is when you do other things in the bathroom. Who, who, who knows what it could be? But to find a lonely place where you can face yourself and encounter God. Because in that place, we are being transformed into his image. Okay, and the next thing, are you ready for the next thing? Fasting. I hate this one. <laughs> Fasting is when you decide to refrain from eating from, for a certain period of time. And I also believe that there's other fasts, like, you know, the dopamine fast, where you kind of decide to focus on God. But, but historically and biblically, it is relating to food. Because... Our stomach is maybe the most powerful will <laughs> that is in us. 
I don't know if you've, you've had, had any cravings, you know, sugar cravings or, or whatever else. It's, it's like, oh, suddenly I'm, I'm holding a piece of cake in my hand. I don't know how that got there, you know. But actually, when we decide to abstain from food for a certain period of time, and, and, and if you were to start this, I would encourage you to start small, you know, maybe with a meal uh, once in a while, or maybe f- for a season leading up to Easter or something like that, to take a certain period of time where you, where you decide to fast. I was talking to a, 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 another new believer in our church a little while ago who was like, yes, George, I, I've discovered this, this great thing. I'm fasting. I'm like, wow. I'm, 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 like, talking to new believers is the best thing to keep yourself in check. <laughs> like, it, it just inspires me so much. And he was like, yeah. I, I just really wanted to go deeper with God. I, I really want to grow in my late relationship with him. And that, that is actually what happens. We say no to our stomach, to king's stomach, as some people call it, in order to grow our hunger for the Lord. It doesn't move God's hand. It's not like we're forcing God's hand. Now you have to listen to me because I'm punishing myself with this. No, we are, but we are actually moving ourselves to God. You know, this, the, in, in Matthew chapter 4, we see that, that, that Jesus is actually called by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. That's an, an interesting sentence right there. So Jesus is in the wilderness, into the quiet place, into the lonely place, and he is fasting. And, and, and you know, he... I, I really believe that he he was doing that not so he would get weaker, but actually so that he would grow spiritually stronger. And then when the devil comes, uh, he he starts to kind of question him and and maybe maybe point point to a few things that maybe could be a temptation in his life. And one one of them is is about food. And then then Jesus did this, and this is also a good example for all of us. Okay, we're, we're in the scriptures, we're in prayer, and maybe we're fasting in silence and solitude, and then things pop up that we're like, ah, oh, that's it's like a lie from the devil. What Jesus did was that he responded with prayer, with, with scripture. And Jesus said this: Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I just want to encourage you to, to try it out. Try it out this year. Just for a certain period of time, maybe it's like for, for one day, or maybe, you, maybe you're going to skip, skip certain foods for a longer period of time, or whatever it might be. Always drink water. I know Jesus didn't do it here, but I would not recommend. Uh, talk to your doctor. That's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> um, but actually, when we decide to say no to God, no, no, no to our flesh, uh, this was just a test. Well done for laughing. Well done for laughing. When we decide to say no to our flesh, we say yes to God. And we are being transformed from the inside out. Okay, next thing. Are you ready? I can't remember what number we're up to now, but five. Uh, this is Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest. So the Sabbath was... Was, uh, it's, it's originated all the way back from the creation story where, where, where God told the first human beings, their first day was a day of rest, and, and, and he told them, uh, for six days you shall, shall do your work, and then on the seventh day you shall rest. It's a day dedicated to the Lord. And it was actually a part of the Ten Commandments uh, that you would rest for 24 hours during the week. Isn't that strange? that you would have to tell someone, you have to rest. You, know, there's no, you have no choice, 24 hours, no work. Like more, because we, we all like, don't take stability away from us, you know. It's, it's not really something that, that, that you have to fight for. But, but actually, I, I think there is a temptation in all of us to keep working. Because we are not completely sure that God is going to take care of us. You know, the Sabbath is a gift from the Lord. You know, in, in, Mark, in Mark chapter 2 and verse 27, uh, Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. It is a gift to you. It's not man for the Sabbath. 
And what Jesus was pointing to was that some people had made the Sabbath just like a religious box that you needed to, to tick no matter what the cost was, uh, you know, even if you needed help, even if you were stuck in a pit, you know, I, would, I wouldn't help you because it's the Sabbath. But what Jesus was saying is, no, no, it's it, like, and we can also see that in the New Testament, that the Sabbath is no longer a law, but I still believe it is a gift from God. That actually you are allowed to rest for 24 hours of the week. Six days you can do your work, and then to receive the gift of rest from the Lord. And actually, for me, it is a faith statement. It is, I can do more in six days with God than in seven on my own. I can do more in six days with God than in seven on my own. Own and to allow to receive that gift. Yeah, it's the same thing with tithing. Like we talked about, I, I say the same same thing. Thing with tithing is, is, is I believe I can do, I, I can do more with ninety percent with God than a hundred on my own. It's a faith. It's a faith step actually to decide I'm going to rest. Then number six. Everybody say number six. Well done for paying attention to this, guys. You're doing well. It's service. Service is when we decide to use our own strength and resources to benefit someone else. You know, we're living with the mindset of how can I add value to this situation or these people rather than how can I get what I want from this situation and from these people. You know, it's, it's, it's a very challenging thing, isn't it? Because I think so much of our world is telling us you have to look out for yourself. You have to get to get what, get what you need, and you need to look at how can other people serve your agenda and serve you. But actually, Jesus, he is calling us to live completely opposite, to say, I am choosing to take my focus off myself to serve others. You know, in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, it's, it's just a beautiful description of how we're called to live. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. You know, there's something so attractive about people who live a life of service. And I really believe it's because it reflects Jesus. And and, you know, I'm so grateful for every single person in our church who volunteers, who serves. And, you know, you might be on a team, but you, but you, you, you might be a, a, a mom here. And the way that you serve is actually by bringing your kids to church. On the good days, on the bad days, I'm going to bring them to church. I'm serving them by, by coming to church. You know, no, no matter what, what it might look like in your life, we, we are so grateful for, for the impact they're having. I'm talking to people all the time, people who are new believers, people who just recently joined, joined our church, and I can see the impact, your small acts of service, week in and week out, the impact that it has. But I also believe this, that ser- I, I believe service changes the world. That's one thing. I really, truly believe that. But I also believe that serving changes us. Maybe more importantly than anything else, is that actually by serving others, I'm putting on the mind of Christ. I'm teaching myself not to give in to, to, to kind of the self-indulgence and the consumer mentality, but actually to put on the mind of Christ, to actually decide I'm going to serve someone else. And through that, actually what happens is that you are being transformed yeah. as, as, you, as you're stepping out to serve. And, you know, maybe what, what can that look like for you this year? You know, you can, you can join a team. That, that would be phenomenal to, to, to serve your fellow Christians and new believers who are coming into church. And in your work, what could that look like? Actually deciding, I'm going to have the mindset of Christ in this situation. Not what can I get out of this situation or other, these people, but what is the value that I can add. Because as we live a life of service, we are being transformed. Okay, we're coming to the last thing. Are you ready? It's fellowship. Fellowship. You know, when you look at the life of Jesus, he, 
he, he lived in this ebb and flow of, of solitude and the lonely place and time with his father. And then he had a, had a sense of deep community and he went to the Sabbath on, on Saturdays, which was they, their kind of, kind, of, uh, they, kind of way they had their synagogue and church community. And then he had his disciples that he did life together. He had people who prayed for him. Can you believe that? That Jesus, the Son of God, asked his friends to pray for him. You know, I, then, then I know I need that. You know, so the early church adapted this mentality. And you can see in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, which was our memory verse. So let's say it together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Can I tell you that the early church didn't gather together because they wanted to be good Christians who ticked the religious box? They gathered because they truly believed that they needed one another. That actually that they were called to one another. That, that Jesus had called them out to be with one another, to serve one another, to encourage one another. They, they, they had this phrase that they would use. So that the body would be built up. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the terminology that they had for the church. That we were the body of Christ. So, you know, each one finding themselves. So just, just, I'm, I'm, like th this is one of the metaphors that isn't very hard to explain to people because you're sitting in a body, so you know exactly how it's, how it's working. Like all these parts working together, standing side by side, linking, linking arms so that if one person falls, you know, you can, you can lift the other person up. You know, they got information together because they realized that they were so much stronger together than they would be apart and that God had called them to be this body of Christ that would share the message of Jesus to the world. You know, the goal of church isn't to be a good Christian. It's actually to become more like Jesus. To, to let God work in you. To have people around you that can help you. To, to be in relationships with others that you can help. So I'm, I'm wondering, who, who are you linked up with? Who are you praying for? Who is praying for you? Who are you encouraging? Who is encouraging you when you are go going through a struggle? You know, you might be gathering in a connect group. You might be gathering in a team on a Sunday. You know, the, ch the early church, they gathered in the temple. They gathered at home through the breaking of bread. There was, there was all these different things that work. But I just want to encourage you to step into fellowship to dare to be vulnerable, to dare to put yourself out there, dare to invite some people over for lunch, invite, to invite some people over for dinner, actually dare to say, I'm, I'm going to step into community, even though it might be challenging, even though it might be scary, but to realize that actually in community, when we are together, you know, we, we get to strengthen one another. And, you know, I've, I've been talking to people of this, this, uh, this year already who have people that they're praying with every day and just telling me the impact that it has in their life, just having someone that they're calling every single day to pray together. What a wonderful thing to step into fellowship together. But this year, 2024, the goal is not to be a good Christian, to tick religious boxes. The goal is to be more like Jesus to let him be formed within you. And man, I am praying and I am believing that we will have encounters in church this year that changes people's life in a moment, that we see miracle happen, that we see great, great acts of God that just, that just moves mountains in front of us. But I also want to encourage us this year to not underestimate the power of your daily disciplines, your weekly disciplines, your monthly, your yearly faith habits, week in and week out, the small things that you do often that might feel like you're standing on a step doing some toe raises but actually over time they are the things that is going to form the life of Christ in you because the invitation is from Jesus to draw on him this this is not 
to be a good Christian, to tick religious boxes. These are ways where we get to draw His strength, where we get to receive His grace, where we get to receive His help. It is not something that we earn through doing these things. It is something that we receive by engaging with the Word of God, to engage with the prayer language that we have been given, the, the relationship that we have to being just by ourselves in a relationship with Him, through all these different practices to let Him work in you. But before we close, I also want to pray for anyone here who hasn't started that journey yet of him being formed in you. You're like, what, what are you talking about? I didn't even know God worked like this or that Jesus is real. But I, but, but I just can feel that, that he is here, that he is knocking on my heart. And, you know, that's beautiful language. It's from Revelations, we, we, can, we can read that Jesus, he is actually standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking. And he says that anyone who opens that door, I will walk in and be with that person. Not the person who kind of cleaned up the room first. No, anyone who opens the door, he will come into your mess. He will come into your challenges. He will come into everything that you're going through. And he will step in and be with you and help you get formed again. To, to put you on your feet again and to, to be with you. He, 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 he's, he, he's given his life for you so that you can receive him so i just want to ask everyone to close your eyes and bow your heads just to give you a moment of privacy and if that is you that you want to connect your life to jesus today either for the first time or today you're coming back to him i just want to give you a moment to respond just to open that door to start that journey of following jesus and he is here right now so one God loves you. He has given his life for you. Two, he has made everything ready. There's nothing more that you can do to get ready. The only thing we need to do is to respond. So two and three, just raise your hand wherever you are if you want to connect your life to Jesus today. Thank you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you up here. Anybody else want to connect your life with Jesus today? That's beautiful. You can take your hands down. And we're going we're gonna to pray a prayer together as a way of starting this relationship with Jesus, just inviting him in. And, and I want to especially ask you who, are, uh, uh, who, who, who raised your hand and this is your first time today, or maybe you're coming back to him to pray this, but we're going to pray this together as a church family. So repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you came for me, that you died on the cross for me, so that, I could have life. so that I could have life. So that I can have forgiveness. So that I can have, forgiveness. So that I can have a future with you. I make you my Lord. I make you my, Lord. My, Savior. my Savior. And my friend. Help me to live with you. For the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Can we celebrate together? Amen. Massive congratulations to every single one of you who made that decision. We, uh, we are so excited for you. Uh, and, you know, the reason why we do that is because we know what it has done in our life. And inviting Jesus in and starting that journey with him, we want to help you along on the journey. We want to do whatever we can to help you. And the first thing that we want to do is to give you a Bible because we really believe that it all starts there by getting to know God for yourself. So on your way out, we have a next area where you, where you can get a Bible and, and someone will, uh, will give it to you. And if you want to pray with them, we would love to do that or help you get connected in any way that we can. And, and secondly, I just want to ask you to keep coming back to church because I need you and you need me. That's just the way that it works together, that we get to do life together. So come and talk to us and we would love to help you in any way that we can. But can we celebrate one more time? And can we stand to our feet? Let's pray. And then we're going to head out. Jesus, I thank you that as we walk out of this room, you walk with us. And we just pray for your blessing upon your people. And may you keep them safe this week and strengthen us. And you see everything that we're going through. And we just pray for your, your peace and your power into those situations. And we pray that through our lives that you will be glorified, that we will be able to become more like you, Jesus, this year. And we just want to say that we give you all the glory and all the praise. Help us to be a light for you in the world that we are walking into, into our schools, into our workplace into our families and friendship circles. Help us to bring your light there. And, and we pray, Father, for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, church, for coming today. We really hope that that encouraged and blessed you. If you made a decision for Jesus, a massive congratulations from us. We would love to be in contact with you, send you a Bible and connect you to a local church. So just below in the details of this episode, there's a different way to contact us. I can encourage you to reach out so that we can help you. Obviously, if you live anywhere near one of our physical locations, we really hope to see you in person very soon. There is nothing like being in the room. Can I also encourage you, if this blessed you, why don't you share this with friends and you know, make sure you pass it on to them as well. Make sure to click, click subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode we send out. God bless you.